Uh, I'm going to talk about error handling, and this is, uh, at first glance, pretty straightforward theme. Uh, so straightforward that it, uh, as far as I know, uh, isn't covered enough in textbooks and uh, online manuals and so on. Okay, we all know uh, good buzzwords like you know, happy path coding, later crash, and so on. Uh, and in this sense, uh, error handling in Erlang is uh, damn simple. But in some sense, uh, error handling in Erlang is painfully and uh, hard. You, I think you all uh, saw things like this, and uh, it's, it's messy, I think. Okay. Uh, Pretty common solution for this for such problems uh, is uh, separating of such cases in different functions. But in fact, it's not a real solution because uh, you just hiding these uh, cases in different functions, and you need to make function names and so on. And it's like you know uh, thinking that scary monster will uh, disappear if you don't see them. Uh, okay, some people think, oh, okay, we have a problem, we will use validators, some, some sort of releases, XML scheme, uh, JSON scheme, or the library sheriff uh, that I will talk about right now. Uh, this is an URL, and this is a library from the awesome team that made uh, Cowboy. Uh, all the links that uh, will be shown in this uh, presentation uh, will be shown again in the uh, last slide. So you can just write uh, them later. Uh, it does something like this. Uh, it uses uh, type specifications to check if some object uh, uh, is correct uh, in, with respect to that specifications, like, like here. But it's uh, definitely nice, I think, and definitely useful. Uh, useful. But what about this? Uh, sometimes we just uh, can't uh, use ma uh, match failure, like like here, like here, uh, because we need to uh, show our user some some sort of uh, error that is more meaningful that you have by the argument. Uh, so validators. Uh, uh, don't sh uh, don't solve our problem in this sense, and there are another problem. In fact, uh, what's an IP? Uh, most of the time, it's just four numbers from zero to 24, uh, 10, uh, 255 uh, and some dots. But uh, what if we have IP version six with all that shortcuts and mixed uh, notations? Uh, okay, we. Uh, theoretically, we can uh, came up with some sort of parser or regex, pretty complicated, but anyway, that will validate our IP. But some uh, times we need to uh, we need constraints that just not that just can be expressed as some some sort of you know uh, regex, for example, uh, like here. And in general. Uh, all specification languages ten, uh, tends to be uh, tends to move uh, to programming languages because, uh, in general, the expressiveness uh, of a specification language uh, to handle all cases should be the same as uh, expressiveness of full-fledged programming language. And so, it's not a real solution. Again, we just just make this problem uh, hidden. Okay, uh, so what is the, pro the real problem here? First of all, we we can say it shortly and say that okay, we just don't have something like Python's return and so on. So, uh, we can do implicit branching. To it. Uh, sorry, uh, we can do implicit branching uh, in some point of our function. We just need to make it uh, make cases so uh, all branching is explicit. Uh, well, it's not exactly true because we have exceptions, but uh, exceptions we use them uh, a lot of times when uh, we all love such constructions. When we code for 
happy, happy path, so called. Uh, when we just write things like here, we, and we get uh, our exception, and all, everything is okay. We just don't write uh, cases explicitly. But e, uh, and and we have uh, nice exceptions. Uh, we can all uh, when we need to show them to user in a more meaningful way, we can use try and change and so on. Uh, and theoretically, we can solve our problem like like this. But what if we have more than one statement and we need to uh, show our user uh, where is the problem exactly uh, that uh, A is wrong or B is wrong? We just can't uh, decide using try and catch, uh, plain try and catch. Uh, where the problem is. Okay, uh, there is another attempt to solve this problem in monads, and who, for for those who just don't know uh, what it's all about, I will make a brief, very brief intro. Uh, what we think uh, when we see this uh, comma here. Okay, we can think that it's just a syntactic construction, uh, but in some sense, uh, this comma is more than just uh, syntax. It's an instruction to some entity that executes our code that, okay, uh, we, we have done here, let's proceed to the next statement. And uh, uh, this is unconditional jump, obviously. We just proceed. But in fact, we can make this jump conditional. So uh, writing stuff like this, uh, it's messy, but just for, just for a moment, uh, let's uh, think about this style. Uh, because here, if we, we have some convention uh, on what we expect from functions make foo or make bar, uh, that they will return, for example, uh, something like okay something or error something, then uh, we can write this such function comma in the way that will uh, check this uh, value from make foo and uh, decide uh, if we need to continue evaluation of our expressions or just return some error. And in this th sense, such approach uh, solves our problems because uh, now we can uh, we have a degree of control that we need because uh, we can. Uh, stop the execution in any point and we can uh, handle quite uh, difficult logic when we are checking that values. And in fact, uh, monad is nothing more than such comma function, uh, a data type that uh, commas, comma function expects that okay something or error something. And uh, function return that is not shown here, but it's just uh, something like um, um, take the value and return OK value for in this example. And guys from RabbitMQ made uh, this work in Erlang, made some uh, uh, parse transform magic, uh, and it looks like this. Uh, as in fact, uh, this code is expanded to a code like this, but of course, uh, it looks uh, it, lo it looks quite normal, and do the same th do the, th the same thing. Okay, uh, let's pretend that we need to write something to file. Uh, it's an example from Erlando's t uh, tutorial, and I think it's pretty mm, pretty good. Uh, well. This code uh, makes sense, I think, uh, because we really need to s check on every step something and do some things based on our results, previous results. Uh, and it's messy, of course. Uh, okay, of, of course, as uh, I said earlier, we you can theoretically uh, take some cases from here and pass them to another functions, but it's not going to work. 
in general. And with Orlando, it looks like this. Uh, I think it's way more pretty. And uh, if you think for a moment, it's quite uh, idiomatic. Um, uh, no, not idiomatic, but pretty clear, yeah. Uh, here, RM here, it's uh, just a, a monitor cell. It's about conventions uh, that uh, these functions make binary or file open uh, would return OK something or error something tuples. Just uh, the way to tell Erlando that such values will be used. And as far as I know, guys from RabbitMQ use uh, stuff like this in RabbitMQ. Uh, OK. Of course, there are some problems with this approach. Uh, first of all, we have definitely have some performance overhead because uh, here we have uh, anonymous functions uh, on each step. And uh, what is worse, that uh, depending on uh, number of uh, clauses in such such expression like here uh, it will be slower and slower and slower because you will need to make more it's definitely not good uh, it's a bit magical and uh, the not so obvious problem is that uh, for example list is another monad and uh, you can't just monads don't play nice with each other. You, you need to write parse transforms and so on. And if you write this such stuff in Haskell, uh, where it's pretty idiomatic, you have a lot of uh, libraries like, the, uh, like control monad and so on. And nothing of this in Erlang. OK, you can write uh, all libraries, but you, even in this case, you don't have uh, such sophisticated compiler. So I don't think that uh, it's uh, it's way to go. Okay, and uh, the final solution, <laughs> or not the final, but uh, good enough, I think, for some cases, is a library that was started at uh, previous uh, Erlang user conference uh, at Hackathon, and it is intended. It it was intended to solve exactly this problem, and uh, I've tried to. Um, avoid excessive abstractions. Uh, there are also some things that I think uh, many of us wrote, some, like, something like binary to int integer, because you just need to, you know, list, to, mm, sorry, binary to list, list to integer, it's, it's messy. Uh, and uh, list key fun, that is bif, bif, and way faster than prop lists uh, <coughs> get, but, uh, it's, it has inconvenient interface because it returns tuples and you need to match the tuple and return on the, the value that you need and not the key. Okay. Uh, first idea that I had uh, is, is that we, in some cases, uh, uh, you just need to um, ta tag some value with some error label. Uh, Let's say you have a request and you have some queue variables. And uh, when you parse some queue variable and uh, transform and uh, validate, uh, validate it in some sense, uh, it, if in, uh, in any step of uh, the processing this particular value, there will, there will be an error. Uh, this error will be associated not with the operation that was that was failed, but the but with the value itself. So you just uh, wrap such values with some atoms that uh, uh, labels uh, an error in this particular value. And then you use some function that uh, aware of this uh, convention with uh, tuples and so on. With th th this text, I should say. And then you just use them. Uh, then you unwrap that functions and use the z return that is needed to, uh, that in fact, throw this value. But this needed, that, that, 
<laughs> sorry. Uh, this is needed to uh, make this construction return values in some uniform way. Uh, so you can write block like this, uh, z ok and z error, and not like z catch the error and uh, uh, just return value uh, from this try block if everything is okay. I don't think that it's better. But uh, it turns out mm, it's, uh, this abstraction is quite composable because you can just stack these functions uh, and uh, use such uh, shortcuts if you need some uh, common sequences of checks and convertations. Uh, but uh, it tur turns out that uh, this construction is not so useful as, as the, these uh, very simple macros, in fact. Uh, here, this is uh, just a tag to, uh, so we can uh, use it in catch uh, to catch only our errors from the library uh, and not errors that was generated by the our errors. I will show an example in a few moments. Here's an example. Uh, it's a part of uh, handler in our API server. server. Uh, we have some uh, specifications on path variables, that is variables in URI, and uh, body variables, that is variables in query string or uh, query values. Uh, we use these uh, uh, specifications to fetch uh, values from these prop lists because uh, we work with Cowboy and Cowboy returns as prop lists, all, this, all that stuff. Uh, so we can just, for example, uh, use, uh, we can just try to find our method in a list of methods. And if we didn't find this method, uh, list can find will return another, n not a tuple, but false. And we will get uh, an exception, but as you catch, we'll catch this exception and I'll throw it with a label, sorry, bad methods. And then we can catch this bad method label and dispatch an error value based on this uh, label. Uh, like uh, here, you can see that uh, this function form error that will take this error thing. It uh, was just an atom or something else that you will provide in the Z as a second argument to the catch. So uh, it can be quite a simple and uh, nice function, table-like function, function where you have just in head some matching and some simple value returned. It's, fa it's fast and uh, it's nice. A lot nicer, I think, than uh, a bunch of cases. Uh, moreover, this abstraction plays quite good with uh, lists and list comprehensions because if any uh, variable uh, will be missed in that list uh, of variables, uh, it will generate an exception and we will uh, again catch that exception and throw it with label bad road. And again, we can say our user that, oh, guy, you have uh, some problems with your URI. Moreover, we can uh, push this macros inside of uh, list comprehension to make more verbose errors. Uh, like here, uh, we uh, validate the presence and the type of some variable in query variables where it's quite, uh, quite useful to have a name of variable that is missing or of wrong type. So we just push these macros inside of list comprehension uh, and uh, we, in this case, we can uh, uh, throw uh, this label with some particular uh, variable name, like here, and uh, use it to show an error, like here. So uh, then we just need to f need a function that takes such label and returns 
particular HTTP error code and uh, error message, so we can show it to user. And then we, the only thing that is missed here is some sort of function uh, that uses uh, your, uh, your your web framework of choice, like Cowboy, and uh, you just take this, this message and this code and apply, return uh, form an HTTP response and return it to user. Okay, uh, of course there are a pair of problems uh, in this approach, uh, but I think it's not so critical uh, that as in uh, Elando. First of all, of course, it looks uh, quite uh, non-idiomatic. Uh, after all, we have all these wired microsets. Uh, and uh, it turns out that dialyzer uh, is also a little bit of problem here because dialyzer is really bad at uh, inferring types uh, where uh, exceptions are involved. Here, uh, in, functions, in function good, the laser will uh, find an, an error without any problem and will say us that, uh, okay, guy, you can't just, can just make a plus on integer and string. But in the second function, in function bad, uh, you just take this b value, throw it, and catch. And when you catch, in the, uh, when you do this, uh, you lost, you have lost the type of B and the laser uh, assigns type A to C and so uh, because we have uh, optimistic uh, typing, uh, this uh, ex expression A plus C will not uh, make the laser complain. Okay, uh, then I made some, some sort of uh, I said, okay, uh, that uh, Elon can have a problem with performance, so I need to uh, test it. And we will test in three uh, test sets. Uh, it's uh, a model of request when we have some prop list with some fields. And this is an example of a good request that is uh, correct. Then we have two examples of uh, bad requests. Uh, the one when we have some error in the uh, beginning of the request, so uh, our handle, handler will likely fail in the early stages uh, of uh, processing this request. Uh, and the second one, when we have an error mm, on the later parts of requests. Uh, this allows us to see uh, if there is a big overhead uh, depending on the count of such such uh, ah, expressions here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a baseline handler that uh, uh, just uh, falls if uh, there is a, a, any error. Uh, it uh, doesn't uh, control any error, it just, just falls. Uh, and I think it's pretty obvious what's uh, going on here. And then uh, there are two versions of the same handler uh, using Zivil Data and uh, Erlando. It's pretty obvious. Then you have like 10 or 100 thousands of tests in a, in a loop and then you can compare uh, performance. And here you can see that uh, in fact Erlando is quite slow. Uh, when you have uh, your, your test case failing early, it, uh, uh, it's, it has almost no overhead. But when you have more expressions involved, uh, because you just create all that anonymous functions and so on, you have a little, no, not little in fact, because uh, there are no uh, numbers in here, but it's uh, it's zero, so it's, this plot starts from zero. It's not, not something of cheating. <laughs> so it's more than two times slower than just 
I almost three times slower than plain version and uh, more than two times slower than this the validate thing. Well, that's all. Uh, this is the links and uh, in this repo there are performance tests uh, that I mentioned. So we can run it yourself and check if I lied somewhere. <laughs>